today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Harvey Levin here. Fabian here. Derek here. So uh, our special, uh, Who Really Killed Michael Jackson, aired last night on Fox. It's now on Hulu, and there have been some interesting reactions to it. Um, One of the things just on social media that we found is that there seems to be some sympathy for Conrad Murray, yeah. which is interesting because it kind of aligns with even the lead detective in the case who arrested Conrad Murray, who said it was really unfair to lay all the blame at his doorstep. And it seems like people saw it that way, it's, that it's, that Conrad Murray ended up being the only doctor who was con- who was charged, convicted, served time, and then you see what happened you know, beneath the surface And it was very different. No, I I found that very interesting, although I don't think the point of the documentary was to absolve Conrad Murray of any responsibility. It was just to layer in the complexity of this was a 25 year period where he developed a serious debilitating addiction. Arnie Klein was involved. Other doctors were involved. Conrad Murray still played a role in Michael Jackson's de- death. I mean, Conrad Murray was the last he, guy on That's obviously why he was on charged, watch. right? Yeah, like, so, except, so that, that response the, is interesting to me, right? Yeah, but there, I think there's a little more to it. You know, Conrad Murray talked about something, and his lawyer, Ed Chernoff, a really good lawyer, um, also, you know, you saw him talk about this in the, uh, in the documentary, that, you know, Conrad Murray wasn't allowed to call Arnie Klein or any other doctor to the stand. That's really, I think, unfair. Um, and, and I think that when people heard that, that when you look at what a doctor like Arnold Klein did to Michael Jackson, yet you couldn't call him to the stand, you know, it, 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 it's because remember. It feels like he didn't get a fair enough trial then. You're saying he didn't get to put his entire case on to, to fight the involuntary manslaughter. When you conviction. watch this, Demerol, which he got shot up with <clears throat> almost every day by Arnie Klein, it causes insomnia, and you know, it, then it fuels this whole need for propofol. Conrad Murray was saying I, from the day he first got interviewed by the cops, the first day, he said, "I didn't give him propofol for the last three days." And his position always was he walked out of the room, and Michael shot himself up. I, now you may believe that, you may not believe that, but you know, it, it, he couldn't call any of these others, other doctors who were saying Michael liked to push the propofol himself. Now I'm not saying Conrad Murray did or didn't do it, but I think when everybody hears the evidence and you think about the trial, you have a little pause. Yeah. You have some questions. I think particularly, as you said, uh, since you've added in the complexity of the other doctors involved, feels like Conrad Murray should have been able to present that case. Um, but, you know, he's the attending physician. He's the last that's, guy that's on exactly. watch uh, when I, the, pro- the, the the lethal propofol that, sort of that's event exactly happens. What I was say. That's I, hard to say Conrad didn't deserve to serve some sort of time of for, for being mean, the guy. That, that know, goes without last saying. Guy. Who's <laughs> worse, Arnie Klein or Conrad Murray? I don't know why I don't know understand this whole idea of like trying to blame all blame it all on Arnold Klein. Like I understand what you're saying, but like I'm not. It, I don't think you're that, blaming. No, not it. blame it all. I mean, that's kind of what it seems like this is about. No, it's you know? Arnie like, Klein. It's other doctors in what LA. Other doc- what other they, doctors exactly? I, I'm not going to mention names. Okay, we didn't mention any. any other I understand, names. but we said that he had gotten propofol for years. Mm-hmm. That he had gotten propofol in Las Vegas. That he got propofol in Miami, that he got propofol in Germany, that he liked to push propofol himself. Um, the lead detective even said that that Michael Jackson for years had been using propofol, and that he said that Michael not only asked Conrad Murray for it but demanded it. And Murray's mistake was he said, "Look, he's going to get it somewhere because he was so connected to all these doctors that he thought he would do it." He was now, wrong. That's a mistake. He was wrong. That that is a no a physician's responsibility he, not to capitulate to a strong patient. That is his fault. One hundred percent. But I agree with you. I'll answer your question. I think Arnie Klein's worse. I think the person who kicks off the addictive behavior for the long haul is worse than the failure of the doctor down the line, the Conrad Murray figure, to intervene and yeah. stop the train from running. I agree with you. In the moral culpability, Arnie seems worse to me. Because now you he you said that there was uh, sympathy to Arnie. There was. Uh, on our episode yesterday for the in the YouTube comments, people apparently had seen the special and were saying that it's, it's kind of weird that Michael Jackson is sort of being absolved here a little bit too as if like he had nothing to do with this like if anything you want some he, sense of personal yeah, responsibility he's the ultimate person who's responsible for himself and i understand us looking for other people to blame but i mean for god's sake 
addiction he, is he, a he nasty monster. He killed himself. Mo- like that's really what that's really what happened here. And like and when did when addiction's did Michael, a nasty monster? I agree. Right? But when did and, when did Michael Jackson start seeing Arnold Klein? It wasn't in the eighties. Who was the person that started giving yes, him yes, opiates in yeah, the eighties? Yes, it was. Was it in the eighties? He, he's he was seeing him for that long. Um, Debbie Rowe met Michael Jackson through Arnie, through Arnie Klein's office in the eighties. Ar- yeah. So Arnold Klein is the one who started got him hooked on it in the eighties. Uh, he was getting, I don't know whether he was the first. What happened was in 84, when he got badly burned, he was put on opiate, opioids. They should have taken him off, and they didn't. And he stayed on it basically well, for the rest of his saying, life. Who, who put him on the opioids? Well, but maybe, he was, maybe he was on the that, ones to blame. No, no, no. He was on them for the right reasons he was on, after the burning. It was though, absolute, that was legitimate. absolutely appropriate to give yeah. him opioids at the beginning. The issue is that they didn't wean him off it. Right. And they kept him on it, and he kept doing it. And he was touring like crazy. He couldn't sleep. The opioids made him an insomniac. And then he started using anesthesia and propofol. And on his tours, he was using, I mean, we, we you heard a doctor, um, uh, oh God, I'm, why am I blanking on who, uh, Stuart Finkelstein, um, who, you know, was treating him, I believe during the bad tour. And he was, he talked about how, um, he brought Demerol and morphine and another doctor broke into his suitcase and gave it to Michael when when uh, Finkelstein was at the pyramids. So this has been going on for a long, long, the, the, long, long time. The tragedy is the two decades plus of time that he was addicted to opiates. There were so many times to intervene and someone to sort of, you know, stop it in its tracks while it could still be addressed. Mm. And all the blame is shifted to the last guy, Conrad Murray. And I think that's what was so important about the documentary is just at least introducing people to the other cast of characters well, they who also, played a role. They also I think Conrad was a known figure right. whether he deserves right. all the blame part of the blame people, people didn't make, know they, about that yeah, part of right. the story in the same own, way they can make up their own and they also that. didn't know the extent of michael's addiction i mean right. everybody thought it was oh my god look what happened that night right it was 25 years it, it's an incredibly long time and and i i found it fascinating because i think people haven't focused on the right thing and it'll give people a new window into what addiction looks like this is not just something that michael jackson suffered from it typically takes place over a period of time you're not right. killed on one night he he happened to take that lethal dose and that's what everyone gloms onto but now people will understand more i mean you know prince is another one who yeah. suffered long periods of addiction and right, and, and, right. and we'll and, investigate and, that and we're, I mean, we're doing an we're doing a documentary on prince right now yeah. that didn't there happen are, one day on an airplane it's <laughs> very i mean there are similarities yeah there, there are, are similarities um i want to talk about something uh about mar-a-lago mm-hmm. and look to me personally donald trump should be prosecuted for taking these documents i think it's just uh, and and you know, in a way, this is by far not his le- his worst offense. January right. 6th, I think, is his worst. And this is just my opinion. It is, for sure. But still, taking these documents and and then not giving them back and then um, hiding them and saying, I've given you everything when he hasn't, I'm sorry. But to me, he should be prosecuted for this. Because you want to send a message that lawlessness, this entitled above the law well, attitude, well, can't well, be Well, and also, what the hell was he doing with these documents, One, at least one of which had to do with nuclear secrets? So that, Foreign nuclear secrets, right? The, of another country. Yeah, but yeah. No, bad, there are bad. all sorts of consequences. I am, I, I am really upset. As a lawyer, I'm upset that there is this... You know, criti- I mean, look, you're allowed to criticize what judges do, and I'm fine with that, and I do that. But they are they, – they're, they, if you watch what's going on, especially on cable news, they are saying basically the judge who said that there should be a special master went rogue, was insane. I mean, they are – I mean, it's this whole thing that this judge – how dare this judge – you know, you can disagree, but they're not putting anybody on to show – the other side of this. Yeah. And to me, what's happened is there's such hypocrisy in this that it's almost delegitimizing the judicial system when you do something like this. And it's exactly what Trump is doing by trying to delegitimize the FBI and the Justice Department. So, you know, you have a righteous stand to say Donald Trump is delegitimizing pillars of our government 
and law enforcement. And then at the same time, you've got the same people doing that who are delegitimizing. Right, once it goes against th what they want. Exactly. It, I, com exactly. Right. I completely agree. It's an abdication of journalistic responsibility to cover these things fairly and in, in, in a balanced fashion. The right. judge, you may disagree with the appointment of the special master, and that's fine. Fine. But it is, it is okay to wrestle with their opinion, to wrestle with their reasoning, but not to delegitimize the process entirely because right. then— just crying it, foul just to cry foul. You cry that's foul and crazy. it creates the whole right. thing into the political morass that you wanted to avoid. One side of this wanted well, you to know, say he is not above the law. Yeah. Well, then you have to play by all the rules as well. And if right. there's a special master that's appointed, fine. Disagree with the judge. But the judge had a had a right to issue an opinion and come to a conclusion that you yeah. disagree with. That's totally. called process. Right. right. That's our system. As right. opposed and I agree. To, yeah. It is. It, it is really bugs me. Horrendous. It's horrendous. And it, and it delegitimizes their whole effort to show that Donald Trump shouldn't have behaved this way. You're When you're a president, you're a steward of documents, but you're not above the law. And then to say, like, the special master has gone rogue or, or the person who appointed the special master. This is in conflict and it's a problem. And, and you how could, do you address it? But what you could do is you could still say, OK, we have like we'll put an expert on who says that Fine. this opinion was um, Wrong poorly for X, written. Y and Z. Yeah. But Fine. then put somebody on who supports who defends it. it. If you watch c certain cable news. You, there, there is no justification for what this judge did. And I'm not saying there is or isn't, but there's no balance. And everybody is an advocate. Nobody gives a shit about whether to delegitimize anything. You, de you, 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 you attack when the other side delegitimizes, but you delegitimize, it's fine. And you shouldn't have to change the channel to switch into the other silo to actually understand the other position. Well, the, it should be able to be presented to you in a fashion I, so, you nobody does, so nobody does So nobody does, does I agree, but like, the person that they have on to talk about it, I mean, look, there's... Logistically, there's there's time restraints for for cable news and things. So they have to have one guest. They did it all day long yesterday. What I'm saying is they should have they one could. guest who can just do it balanced the entire time. There's you know no such. I, mean? I know, but there's no so, such so thing then, anymore. So then, so then why even cover it? You know what I mean? So it's like. It, Oh, you know, why even watch cable news? You know what I mean? Like that's I think that's the solution. And, and to be fair, when you <laughs> ask the cable news people, they say there's no cause for balance here because this was imbalance and it's illegitimate what happened. So we don't want to give it the airtime of balance. And I understand that argument to a point, but the viewer is left with nothing but a one sided sort of conclusion rather yeah. than allowed to sort of form that opinion themselves. Right. And it's it's really a tragedy. And it's not the way news worked, certainly when Harvey was a kid. Right. It, right, it started right. to creep in when I was a kid, but you still had some talking heads that had sort of an air of legitimacy. You had the big news anchors of the day right. who you could trust. You don't have that anymore. You know what? You, know you feel really... like you have hacked. You well, didn't have Walter it's, it's, Cronkite. Where's Cronkite? Oh, no, no. Where's that guy? I was going to just yeah. say, Walter Cronkite, who was so incredibly balanced, that there was a documentary he did where he essentially came out against the Vietnam War. It was so powerful because you know, it was like, I have reached my limit, and I've never done this before. And it was so impactful yes. that he did it. But he was now, an old conservative kind of seeming guy, but he reached his limit. But now— but he wasn't on cable news either. I think that's kind of the well, problem. Well, no, but he was, was on network he, guy. He, Cable news he, is he the was the network. place for news these days. It's like, why? Just watch ABC TED if you want or whatever. Or well, not. I mean, look, I mean, cable news still, you know— it, it, if the, the most successful one gets four million viewers and the others get one gets under a million all the time. So it's not like it's the whole country. But what it's done is, you know, they are the ones they're they're I think they all play to the uh, extremes at this point. Yeah. And, I mean, and and supposedly CNN is changing that. I don't know if you guys saw that over the weekend. There are people are saying CNN is the new Fox News. People are saying that they're starting to start. They're starting to get more centrist. Themselves. Uh, uh, I, don't I don't know. Yesterday, yesterday, I don't watch CNN. yesterday. <laughs> I, I mean, I just had I had the picture on. I just saw yeah. the, you know, the talking heads and the, the chirons and whatnot. Right, right. All it was was this judge was insane. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a question, because I, I don't want to belabor this too much, but I'm so curious about your perspective on this. When you were growing up, the big anchors were the network anchors, the Walter Cronkite, the Dan Rathers, the Peter Jennings. Those were the John big guys. Chancellor. Now yeah. the stars are Rachel Maddow, uh, Sean Hannity, the guys on the sort of network, or Jim sorry, Costa. the cable, the cable networks, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the network guys, Lester Holt, David Muir. They're not as big of personages. Why did that shift? Because when we shifted away from that, we got into this problem, in because, my idea. Uh, because what happened was that they realized that opinion – can get ratings Drives, on yeah, cable. And 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 look, guys, I don't know how you feel about this. 
I feel like we're on the verge of a civil war. No, we're not. I oh really my do. Gosh, that is so well. You know, so much hyperbole. It, no, first of all, I, 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 really, you, you say this all the time. I want to just address this. You real see, quick. January sixth. I did, but for, <laughs> let, let me just say something. Civil war. What are you talking about? You understand that the, the federal government can wipe out any little militia in this country yeah. easily. So what civil war are you even talking about? It wouldn't I'm, be a civil war at all. What, it would be a slaughter. There'd be no civil war whatsoever. Why are there? Why? Why? Why are, why are there shootings every week? Why are there mass shootings every week? That's, that's People different. have that's armed themselves. People are angry. You've got if a, if a small militia took up arms in the streets, right. even with even with the most powerful weapons, they would be wiped out within seconds. And that would trigger a big problem in the country. What if the, if, the, if, the, well, if that, the federal that, government the wiped could, out a militia, that the army uh, it doesn't matter. I'm saying like I'm physically mm. these things. There would be no war. There's no there'd be no war. It's oh, not yeah. the 1800s anymore. It, it, it would, would never... look different. Like the two sides wouldn't yeah. be as balanced. Course, I understand that position, but what Harvey is saying, the country, the fact of the country would be torn apart. Let's say there's an offshoot militia that was wiped out by the big well, bad federal government. Hey, they would Fabian, all. Fabian, if you're right, explain this to me. Uh, on January 6th, the United States Capitol was attacked, invaded. They were trying to hang the vice president. They then, should have shot those ho people. Hold on. That's what they should have done. The National Guard never stepped in for hours and hours and hours. I don't know. So you're, I don't, no, no, I don't but, know but orders they but were hold following, on. but they but, should have stepped in and I, shot those I, people. I, That's I, what should have happened. Fabian, what I'm saying is you just said that they would wipe everybody out. They would. We well, they didn't. With the authorization. Well, they, Trump was... A, okay, well, but, 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 okay, but, but, they but that's the, 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 right that's the chief, point. So with the right commander-in-chief, well, what, what nothing the, would ever rise to What if you have the wrong commander-in-chief? We don't always get the right What if you have the wrong commander-in-chief? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> vote, vote, vote at the polls in November. I don't know what to say. I don't know, man. Uh, okay. Right. Um, I go. love this last story. Okay, go ahead. You, I want to. No, you, you you go first. So I am still watching the U.S. Open. I'm not a huge tennis fan. I confess, but I've watched so much of the U.S. Open, and I realize it's not only about Serena Williams. It's about Nick Kyrgios. Kyrgios uh, is is this Australian tennis player yeah. who is the bad boy of tennis. I think he's going to save tennis if he gets wow. a little bit better. Um, he lost an epic five set match. Uh, it, it was incredible. And he's his like the new McEnroe his, essentially. Or? He has that potential. Do you feel that as well? Okay, so. He loses this match. It's a heartbreaker. It's a five-set match. Epic. Very well played. Mm. Uh, it starts to slip away from him at some point. You can feel his frustration on the court. Afterward, he unleashes this tirade that is up there with McEnroe. Yeah. He breaks two rackets well, into smithereens. Just Let's break this down. Yeah. yeah. First, he he takes his own racket that he was playing with and breaks it. Yeah. And smashes it on the ground. Right. And I get it. Yes. Right. He was pissed. Sure. But to pick up a different a racket, yeah. the I'm second racket was unbelievable. <laughs> it was epic. It was epic. Yeah. And and I think that with Serena gone, tennis needs something. It needs a it star. Needs and look, we are we we're, we're with uh, we're in a great era of tennis in terms of the play. Rafael Nadal is incredible he's incredible but he's very polished and he's a very good guy you yeah, see him in press yeah. conferences he rarely makes a misstep in terms of what he says you need that bolt of lightning and it's he boring, yeah. it, it bores you to watch someone so dominant federer was like this too they're well, incredible still, if you're into We're spoiled. if you're into tennis watching the game is great but there's color to these games beyond that, beyond just the match well itself. it's exactly what you said it's like the first thing you said is oh like McEnroe. McEnroe hasn't played in decades yeah. but, but it's people still remember him but they remember of, him yes, because yes, of what he did because yes. of his answer and it was fun. It was interesting. Jimmy right. Connors was colorful. It's These guys legendary. were bulldogs. These right. guys are so I mean, good like that Pete, they just win quietly. Pete Sampras right. was a great tennis player, but he was boring as hell. Yes. And so, and who was the star of that era? The guy with the long hair, the rock star, Andre Absol Agassi absolutely. was the star. Pete right, Sampras right, was a right. better tennis player. And they True. need and and you know the New York Post, which I, I love their headlines. They came up with Ash Hole <laughs> for, <laughs> for Arthur. I say no, it's so good. It's I mean, so good. It, 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 this I don't. I can't explain why I loved it so much. So we're all we're all on the same page. The tantrum was awesome. The right? tantrum. Awesome. Yeah, I think, awesome. I think, yeah, you obviously think of Macro, McEnroe when you see this, but remember McEnroe matched brilliance on the court right. with the tantrums. Right. I think Kyrio still has so to long, get to the as level. As long as the level of play matches the, the level of tantrum, oh, then you're, it's all good. I want to see if him you're play like a baby and you suck. That's not. That's it'll wear thin. Yeah, yeah. It'll wear but thin. But you need know, to play Rafael Nadal in finals. And the, stuff. The, right. the, the weird right. thing is, is that women's tennis is different than men's tennis. Just like when you watch Serena or Martina, mm -hmm. you know, just the, or Steffi. It, it really, the the skill level is enough because they're just so incredible, and the men are incredible too. But for some reason, it's different. It is, and and, and, and you mean more compelling. 
that men's. I don't know that it's just different. The, it's the like game it's like if I watch yeah. if I'm watching Serena, I'm in. For sure. I'm in. If when no I watch Martina, like that, yeah. I'm in. Right. But I want to see color more with the men. I, I mean You want to see the fire. You want to see yeah. the fire a little bit. Yeah. And and, and, and I'm not I, sure I, why is, that is. Is it controversial to say that men's sports is just more compelling than women's sports generally? Uh, I is think that, it's is the that, I think that's too controversial. I, I, I think that's obviously true with uh, the ticket sales. I mean, just I'm I, just saying. But I think this is the opposite. Well, I think soccer. watchability, the women's game is the more women's game is more watchable. more volley intensive. It's yeah, yeah. slow. It's a little bit slower. Yes, you're yeah, right, yeah. but it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel slower. No, it, no, it doesn't feel slower when you're watching it, but it has more elegance to it. The men's game is so much power these days yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. I enjoy the women's game watching. That's why I need a guy like this I got to, to, to keep me in. Anyway, that was second. I'm glad we're all on the same page. We all but agree. The, I, I know it, and, and everybody's like, oh, my God, war. what a cry, baby. What? And I'm thinking, oh, oh my God, it's, it's this, a, a this guy's saving tennis. <laughs> it's, a no throwback. it's a throwback to the great personalities of our it area. Really so, okay, anyway. we, we will see you tomorrow, everybody. Right.